Um, I guess we'll get started. Uh, hi guys, my name is Presley and um, I'll be presenting for you guys today. Um, I'm here with Maddie, she's going to do our demo and then Darlene is going to be monitoring the comment section and she'll go ahead and go over some uh, guidelines now. Hi everyone, so as Presley said, my name is Darlene and I'm one of the Beach Balance Assistants. So our housekeeping rules are pretty similar if you've been with us for our summer events. Um, we ask that all participants keep their microphones off during the workshop um, and to place any questions in the comment section to be answered at the end. And then also just make sure to ask questions related to the presentation. Um, so whether it be a meal prep, whatever we have going on, and then also um, we'll have these all in the chat, but for more Beach Bounce events, sign up for our monthly newsletter and we'll have a link for that as well. So I'll go ahead and put that in for you guys. Thank you, Darlene. Okay, so I'll start the presentation. Uh, so some of the main topics that we'll be discussing today are how meal prep is good for cost efficiency. You get a lot more bang for your buck. Um, you get more nutrient dense meals because you're uh, buying your groceries and you're deciding what you get to put into it and you can get healthier, fresher food as opposed to like fast food. And it's also way more convenient um, because everything is pre-made so you don't have to wait in any lines or uh, wait to have to pick up your order and stuff like that. You also save a lot of money. So buying and making your own food may cost a lot initially, but it can help you save money in the long run. Um, so if you were to buy $50 worth of groceries to make two different, or yeah, let's say, or to make two different recipes, we'll say that it makes 10 meals that's only $5 a meal. And then you have meals for the entire work week, Monday through Friday, and then you don't have to stop to buy food or skip a meal. So a fast food breakfast would cost around $12. Um, can anyone take a guess at how much it would cost if you were to make it yourself at home? Uh, you can go ahead and put your guess in the comment section and we'll see how close you come. Four dollars, that's super close. Five dollars, that's a good guess also. Um, In reality, it would only cost you $1.74 per meal if you were to make the breakfast bowl at home. Uh, Cause five eggs are $1.50, potatoes are $2.20, five bell peppers would be 50, oh, sorry, five, five bell peppers at 50 cents each. Um, a tortilla would be about $1.50, but then you're buying five to make five meals. A can of black beans is only a dollar and then a bag of spinach is two dollars. So eight seventy divided by five would be a dollar seventy four per meal. And there are uh, lots of affordable grocery stores in the area. There's Aldi, Food Celeste, Costco, Walmart, Trader Joe's, Amazon Fresh, and Rinko. Um, a personal favorite grocery store of mine is actually Vons. Uh, if you have like a loyalty um, phone number with them, you can actually get a lot of um, discounts and everything. And they have lots of great organic options and uh, even vegan options if you're on a vegan diet or trying to go more plant-based. Uh, you guys can go ahead and comment if you have another favorite grocery store that isn't on the list. Data Bros. So, 
um, nutrient dense, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, meal prepping is not only cost efficient, but it also allows you to make healthier food choices. You get to choose the foods that you use and know exactly what you're eating, which means that you can uh, lower the amount of sugar that you put into your food. And um, it can be higher in vitamins and minerals. And this is an example of what a well-balanced meal looks like. So it's about 50% fruits and veggies, 25% whole grains, which are good because there's high fiber content, and 25% healthy protein. So look for lean proteins such as fish, meat, turkey, etc. Um, you also want to have water with you at all times. You want to stay hydrated. And uh, healthy fats like avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil, or just like the avocado fruit itself are super good uh, for you. They keep you full and they do good things for your skin and your hair. So this is what a plate would look like if you were trying to achieve weight loss. Um, it's the same size as a regular meal, although it's composed of different ratios. So fruits and vegetables should make up about half the plate, whereas whole grains should be less than a fourth. And some good um, whole grains that you can have are like brown rice or um, whole grain bread. Um, lean proteins should be also about a fourth of the plate. And you should always have healthy fats like a teaspoon of avocado oil or something. And this is what your plate would look like if you were trying to gain some weight. So as we said before, it's about the same size as a regular plate, but the ratios are still different. So you can see that instead of fruits and veggies taking up half the plate for weight gain, it's actually going to be um, grains that are going to take up half the plate. Um, where, uh, so a majority of your carbohydrate short source should be from whole grains instead of fruits and veggies. And whole grains carry more fiber and calories than the fruits and vegetables, which allow for more calorie intake, and that's going to help you gain weight. Uh, lean proteins will also take up a fourth of the plate, much like the vegetables. And then uh, for weight gain, you can actually have like two tablespoons of healthy fats instead of one teaspoon. And you still want to have water with you and maybe a side of extra carbs from fruit as a snack. But if you're vegan, you could also swap out the animal protein for soy products like tofu or legumes. Uh, some helpful resources to help you track your macronutrients are uh, like your carbs, protein, fats, and, and get recipe ideas as well are like My Play or Yummy gives awesome recipes and then you can filter it by diet preference or allergy. So today's uh, breakfast burrito recipe, you're going to need five eggs, potatoes, uh, five bell peppers, five tortillas, a can of black beans, and then a bag of spinach. And then you can see Maddie has all of those ingredients laid out in front of her. Um, this meal is great for breakfast and good for any meal of the day. Uh, I personally love to eat breakfast for dinner. I think it tastes better at nighttime. I don't know if anybody else can agree, um, but you can also use it for a post-workout meal or a pre-workout meal for fuel. And the potatoes provide carbohydrates for your body to store in your muscles, which are used as glycogen, uh, or it's stored in your muscles as glycogen to use for energy. And then the eggs and beans are also filled with protein to help you recover or build muscle. Uh, protein helps with all body functions and is extremely important. A fun fact is that eggs have all the essentials, essential amino acids that your body can't create itself and use for and it needs it from your diet to build muscles and recover. As for the rest of the meal, it's important to get those vitamins and minerals from your vegetables. So if you have any extra veggies laying around the house, feel free to throw those in as well, or just do some greens. 
so if you're not a fan of spinach, you can use like arugula or kale or just anything green. Like even if you wanted to put green beans or something, I know that's not something you typically see in a bag of burrito, but that's a good substitute. Uh, and you could also top it off with some fresh avocado and pizza de gallo, or if you like spicy stuff, you can put in some hot sauce. That sounds super good. And for and those will all provide you with more vitamins and fat. Um, to cook those potatoes, you're gonna need a little bit of oil, which will also help you supply you, um, or which will also help supply you with some healthy fat. All right. So, Presley, do we want to jump into um, starting the demonstration? Yeah. Uh, so go ahead and yeah. so I'll just go over some of the greens I have right now um, since they are the same as the ones that are on the screen but I do have a little extra just because um, you know I like tend to have a lot of food on hand so I actually have mushrooms too as well as what was mentioned as another vegetable to add um, and I also have diced tomatoes I know that those were mentioned but you don't necessarily need to buy tomatoes you could buy just the can of tomatoes um, they're just as nutrient dense, basically the same thing. Sometimes even like canned products can have more of a benefit towards you because um, sometimes they could be fortified, but I know tomatoes in specific, uh, specifically, they have a compound in them that makes them more of like your body absorb it more when it is in a um, processed form. Although you do have to consider like the increase of sodium to keep it more shelf stable. So, um, just keep that in mind. And then I have the pico de gallo. Um, I do have some garlic and um, an onion to chop up as well. If you have minced garlic at home in your fridge, go ahead and use that. You do not need to use um, fresh garlic. That's completely like up to you, your own discretion. Um, but the onions, um, I like to get them fresh and not just use like maybe like onion powder. Um, so if you do have like an onion laying around, go ahead and do it. And if it's not maybe a yellow onion or maybe it's a sweet onion or it's a red onion, I mean, I don't know how that would taste, but try it out. Try a red onion, you know, those have different values, like in nutritional um, benefits than the yellow ones just because of the color pigmentations are different. So um, we're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and start and um, Presley will be explaining um, for you guys what's happening. Um, and if I feel the need to buy in or anything, I will um, jump in onto the call. So I'm gonna mute myself just so you don't see me, hear me like banging and chopping stuff around. Uh, yeah, so like Maddie said, she's just peeling her garlic and she's gonna put that along with the onions into the pan first uh, to get those flavors like really, uh, um, I guess, infused into the oil so that your potatoes also can pick up that flavor. And you can see she has her healthy fat, her um, extra virgin olive oil. She's just going to put that into the pan. Is anybody else like super obsessed with garlic? I tend to put way more garlic into my meals than is recommended just because I feel like the flavor is super good. But go ahead and put it in the comments if you use and like an obscene amount of garlic every time you cook because I'm definitely guilty of doing that. She's chopping up her potatoes into nice little cubes as you can see. Extra I need the mushrooms. <laughs> That's I love mushrooms. But uh, yeah, we can see Maddie is just chopping up her potatoes and putting them in the pan. Alessandra says, uh, I use at least twice the amount of garlic that's required. Yeah, same. It's just so good. I don't know what it is about it.
Uh, Maddie's also leaving the peels on her potatoes, and that's good because there's lots of nutrients in the peels of the potatoes. But if you wanted to peel it, then you could do that too. That's just a step that you would have to take ahead of time, like when you're prepping. I personally love the skin of potatoes, so that's why I keep it on. Um, some people don't like the feeling or the texture of it. Um, it's really like a personal preference, but there is, you know, um, a slight more of a nutrition, nutrition benefit to it just because it does have its skin and there is um, some benefits from that, like you mentioned. So I'm only using um, two potatoes um, just because the recipe, like you can use five if you want to make a lot more, but since I'm just doing this demonstration and not like going to need all like, like these meals prepped, um, I'll prep a few for you guys um, to show, but um, you can also buy like smaller potatoes, or red potatoes, or just like different types. Sweet potatoes would be really good too. Um, it's just like your preference and like how much potatoes you want in each bowl or each burrito, whatever um, is you are making. Maddie, Tristan said that the cuts that you're making look super even <laughs> and they're jealous. They do look good. I'm, that's a nice <laughs> knife. <laughs> Very sharp. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, this isn't my first rodeo. Around the kitchen. Okay, so now she's just going to stir up those potatoes, um, get them evenly coated with that olive oil so that they can all get nice and crispy. And then you're gonna add the garlic. Even though I love using garlic, I feel like chopping it is so tedious and my fingers will always smell like garlic throughout the whole day. No matter how many times I wash my hands or use lotion, that, that scent just sticks and I don't know how to get it out. Does anybody know how to get out the garlic scent from your fingers I'm chopping it for a while? I've heard that using lime helps to get out the scent, but I feel like if I were to use lime on my garlic scented fingers, it would just mix together and somehow my hands will smell like salt for the rest of the day. So I've never tried it, but I don't know. I'm kind of scared too, because then I might be hungry for the rest of the day. Uh, so as you can see, Maddie's not being too precise with the garlic, but she's still getting a really nice chop. And you can make them small or big, depending on how big the chunks you want to have in your burrito are. But she's just giving them a nice chop. She's even crushing it, which I think will help get the flavors out even more if you want an intense garlicky flavor.
And now she's just adding the garlic to the pan with the potatoes. And the next step will be to chop up the onion. And she's going to peel the onion first before she starts chopping it. She's working hard for that onion. <laughs> that onion skin was putting up a fight. It did not want to come off. Yeah, that's gonna make me cry. I hate cutting onions just because my eyes will tear up. And I always forget to like cover my nose because it's like a nose thing. I heard that if you soak onions in cold water or something, it helps it not burn as much. But does that, I don't know if that gets rid of the onion flavor. Have you heard that before, Maddie? I think it's just more of like that, pretty much chilling it is going to slow down like any of its like processes, like, you know, like aging process, like that's why you refrigerate things. So maybe uh, it slows down the release of the onion fumes, maybe. Yeah. That oh. makes sense. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I've used goggles before whenever cutting onions. Oh, if yeah. any of you guys have done the same. But I'm pretty sure you have to cover your nose. Because I thought it was a nose thing. That's why you're out. Probably. Eyes no. If you just gave those a nice rough chop, um, you can make them bigger or smaller depending on your preference. Like if you want some onion strings, I guess you could call them. You don't have to cut them as small. And you can always put more or less onion depending on the flavors that you want to have in your burrito. So she's gonna give that all a mix in her pan. Make sure everything gets evenly coated with uh, those, with that um, olive oil. And so it can cook evenly. And she's gonna go in with a little more olive oil because the olive oil she put earlier probably cooked off a little bit. Then she's gonna help go ahead and season the mix with what looks like pepper. It's a pink Himalayan salt. Oh. Yeah. Just like regular salt, just different a little bit. Yeah. You can use pink Himalayan salt or sea salt if you don't have pink Himalayan salt. Um, iodized salt isn't as good for you as sea salt would be, but um, if that's all you have, then that's perfectly okay. Then she's going to go in with some Trader Joe's chili lime seasoning. So you can add whatever seasonings that you guys like. Uh, I personally love using chili powder and everything and then pepper or like crushed red pepper flakes. Um, but that Trader Joe's chili lime seasoning is super good too. If you guys have ever tried it, you know that it tastes bomb. Uh, go ahead and put in the comments if you have like three seasonings you can't live without. Now she's going to chop up the bell pepper. It looks like she's taking the tops off first and then removing the center to get all those seeds and bits out. She's going to smash them on the table a little bit. And then she's just going to give those a rough chop as well and then add them to a separate pan. Again, with uh, the olive oil for you to help you that. Cool. 
And the bell pepper that she's using is a red bell pepper, but if you don't have red, you could always use yellow or green or orange, uh, just using whatever you have at home. My personal favorite color bell pepper would probably have to be orange because they're super sweet and even if you eat them raw, uh, they taste really good. And fun fact about bell peppers, they actually have a ton of vitamin C in them. So it's really good for your immune system. But um, when you cook them, they actually lose a bit of their vitamin C because vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin. So it kind of evaporates once you cook it, but it's still super good for you. So. If you ever want to boost your immune system and you don't have any oranges, so you have bell peppers, you can eat some raw bell peppers with like hummus, I think is super good. And she's checking on those potatoes, garlic, and onions that she had on the stove earlier, just giving them another mix so that they don't burn. Um, it's important that while you're cooking everything at the same time that you keep an eye on everything, lots of multitasking. Uh, it can be kind of hard to manage at first, but once you do it for a while, it's super easy. And cooking your things at the same time actually saves you a lot of time, like using as many of your uh, appliances as possible. So like if you want to microwave something while you have something on the stove, that saves you a lot of time and um, it makes the process go a lot faster. I just strained these black beans and I'm just going to prepare them for once um, all the ingredients are done so I could um, add them on to um, the bowl or the burrito, whatever it is you're making. So this I'm just going to set aside as well as this is the topping, which is pico de gallo. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add my tomatoes, not to the veggies, but actually to the potatoes. But I think I need to drain them first as much as I can. So I'll be right So while she's doing that, we did have just little questions that we wanted to ask you guys throughout. Um, if you have ever participated in one of our meal prep 101s, if you guys can use the reactions down below and go ahead and clap if you've ever participated in one of our meal preps. So now she's going to add the drained diced tomatoes to the pan with the potatoes, garlic, and onions. Oh, it's your first time, Alessandra. Welcome. <laughs> And she's just going to give us a nice stir. And she's going to check on those bell peppers that she put in that other pan. Uh, they look really good. They look like they're getting kind of soft. That's OK. That happens to me all the time. Tristan was her boss one. <laughs> Now she's gonna add some black pepper to those bell peppers and to the potatoes, tomatoes, um, onions, and garlic. You wanna make sure the seasoning gets evenly distributed over all the veggies. 
So mix those super well. And then you're gonna wanna cover the bell pepper. Um, she's got a can of mushrooms. Uh, I know some people have a love-hate relationship with mushrooms. I personally love them, uh, but you can choose to add or not add these. Uh, she's gonna go ahead and drain those before she adds them. And then she's gonna put that in the same pan as the bell pepper. Cecilia says, this is looking good and making me hungry. Me too. I'm really jealous that Maddie gets to eat this after. <laughs> Never knew mushroom can and can. They have canned everything. Like, yeah. I was surprised too. I didn't know mushrooms came in cans. Or I personally have never bought canned mushrooms before, but the more you know. So I personally like my um my bell peppers to be very um soft. Um, especially like if they're in a burrito or a bowl, just so like if I bite into the burrito, it doesn't like pull out the whole chunk of bell pepper. You know, I don't know if you know what I'm saying, but when that happens or like a piece of bacon and it takes out the whole piece of bacon on a sandwich, it like makes me very mad. So I'm deciding to steam them a little longer. That's why I'm steaming them. And then maybe I'll add some garlic powder, even though there's already garlic in here. Just to spice it up, I also have this really interesting mushroom seasoning. It's made with mushroom. So it's more of like an umami flavor, which is like what mushrooms get there, like why everyone likes them basically. So it's like just that, it's really interesting. If you guys are cooking along with us, we do encourage, if you want to, feel free and go ahead and share your screen so you can see you guys going along with us in the process. Uh, now Maddie is going to go ahead and add some spinach. Uh, looks like she's taking the stems off and then she's adding it to the same pan that the bell peppers and mushrooms are in. And if you don't have spinach, like we said earlier, you can just use any greens that you have at home, um, like kale or arugula. Uh, even if you have canned spinach, uh, that's okay too. It's still nutritionally dense, not as dense as fresh spinach, but still super good for you. Spinach is honestly one of my favorite types of greens because it has like a really subtle flavor. So if you add it to your smoothies for extra nutrients, you can barely taste it. Like you'll mostly just taste the fruit that's in the smoothie. So that's a little nutrition hack if you want to add some more nutrients to a smoothie. Just add some spinach because you can't even taste it. Unless you want a spinach flavor in your smoothie, then just add it like a whole bunch and then you'll probably taste it. But Personally, I'd rather have my smoothie taste like fruit than vegetables. And so now she's gonna combine the bell pepper and mushrooms and spinach to the other pan now that those veggies have cooked down a little bit. 
spinach on, oh, Alessandra says, I recommend spinach on pizza. It somehow kind of ends up tasting like seaweed. Yes, I love spinach on pizza. Whenever I go to like Blaze or Pyology or anything like that, I add spinach on my pizza as well. And she's adding a little more spinach to the big pan. And she's breaking it up pretty small. And now she's just gonna take some coconut oil spray and put that into that other pan that she has, and she's gonna start adding her eggs. But first, you're gonna to wanna to scramble them. So we said, when I'm too lazy to cook, I put spinach, onion, and mushroom to instant ramen to make it a little more nutrition. That's a nice life hack too. Just adding whatever greens that you have to um, instant ramen. Sometimes you can add an egg if you want it to be kind of like an egg drop soup and that'll give a little extra protein. Uh, but Maddie's just gonna crack her eggs into a bowl and then start scrambling them with a fork. Um, you could also just use egg whites if you don't really like egg yolk. Egg whites are super nutrition, super high in protein and they don't have the cholesterol that the egg yolks have. So that's really good. They have like a lighter taste too, but she's just gonna add the scrambled eggs to her pan and then let those cook. And she's gonna take her eggshells away. Uh, I don't know if anybody here gardens or has plants, but uh, if you save your eggshells, you can actually use them as fertilizer for your plants, as a natural fertilizer. And you also, uh, it's, kind of, it's like composting. So, yeah, if you don't want to spend money on fertilizer and you don't want to fill up your trash can too fast, then you can just put your eggshells in your plants. She's just gonna carefully mix. So you guys can see I have a lot less eggs than I do my base. This is because this is half, this is all the vegetables as well as my starch um, and my seasoning such as like onions and stuff. So um, right here I have egg. If I wanted to add more egg, I can, you know, maybe I wanna um, make one of the eggs for one of my meal preps on the day of. So I'll leave one meal prep with just this part and then I'll crack maybe a fried egg if I want a fried egg. But um, for these, this will be for a burrito. Um, but you could also make this into a burrito, burrito bowl or um, like I said, you could crack fried egg and do fried egg instead. Um, I just don't want too much eggs in my burritos um, just because one egg really like, this is six eggs. So this could easily make, like I mean, like two eggs per burrito maybe, um, or maybe maybe even like one egg per burrito if I can make that many. So you gotta kind of just gotta like learn as you go and just like trial and error and see how many eggs you need to make. And then if you have to go back and make more, you have to go back and make more. So I always start with less than I need just in case. And she's just gonna start breaking up the eggs in the pan. And then she's gonna get her tortilla ready. I feel like whenever I cook eggs, um, 
even if it's a nonstick pan and I put a ton of oil, the egg still gets stuck in the pan and taking forever to wash the scrambled eggs out. But Maddie looks like she has a nice nonstick pan because they don't look like they're too sticky. So I don't want to leave my eggs right here just because this burner is still going to be hot for a little bit and I don't want to overcook my eggs because that's the last thing I want to do. So I'm going to just move them over here. You guys won't be able to see them, but I will be adding them to the burrito. Um, you could really start with the eggs or you could start with the potatoes, whichever one you want to start with first. Um, you also should check to make sure your potatoes, since that's the thing that will take longest to cook, are done cooking. So I just broke one in half um, just to see. And it was pretty easy to break, break in half, um, so that's like a good sign usually. Um, you could break it with your spatula, and it's like kind of um, looks like that chalky starch on the inside. As you can see, mine doesn't have too much green, so if I did want to add like spinach to here, I easily could. But we do have black beans and pico de gallo still to add to the bowl once the eggs in this mix are here. So you can see, I'm not going to be using too much because to be able to roll this, you know, so I'm also going to be making a lot of these. Um, or I could save the mix and make it the day of, um, freeze them, or I could just uh, make a bowl too. So she's just going to add the veggie base to the tortilla, and then she's going to add some eggs on top of that. And she's going to break everything up so you get an even amount in every bite. And now she's going to go in with those black beans that she rinsed and drained earlier. And then to top it off, she's going to add some pico de gallo. And here goes the roll. So she's going to start folding in the sides and then folding the whole thing over. Uh, you're going to want to pull it tighter closer to you and then just start rolling the tortilla. And then we have a nice neat breakfast burrito. And now she's going to do another one. So again with the veggie base, then the eggs. And then she's going to go in with the beans. And um, to top it off again with the pico. That looks really yummy. Okay, everyone. So as she continues with that, uh, since you've been following us along, we did want to see um, in the reactions, if you can go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you've been enjoying this event so far. And then while she's finishing up here, continuing making her burritos. Um, also, if you would like some more meal preps for our spring semester, if you guys can go ahead and give a clap in the reactions. Great, we're happy you guys are enjoying them. That burrito is giving her a bit of trouble, but she's got it. Sometimes you're gonna have to unroll and like rearrange your burrito if it's falling apart and that's okay. Uh, I have small hands, so it takes me a while to roll burritos. Uh, she's 
Oh, her brain. Oh, her twisting her ribs. That's okay too. <laughs> So she's just going to start again. Again with the sides first and then rolling the bottom to the top and pulling it in closer to her. And then tucking the sides a little tighter. There we go. <laughs> Super well done. And then you have breakfast burritos for the next few days. And she still has some leftover veggies. Yeah, so as you can see, I have a lot of leftover vegetables, which is really great, and as well as potatoes, because I don't have to use this just for breakfast. For instance, I could add some chicken to it, steak, fish, really whatever you want to, even like different vegetables. I can make it a bowl and easily just add black beans to the top of it with some fried eggs or maybe not even any eggs if you're trying to make it um, like a vegan meal. Um, and the beans could be your protein source. So there's a lot of different ways you could mix and use. Um, personally, I might even freeze some of these in some foil um, and save them for like another day because once you take them out of the freezer, they'll be perfectly fine. You'll just have to eat them that day or the next day. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's a lot left over. So I'm going to have a ton of meals made from what the ingredients is we had. And I didn't even have five potatoes. I had two potatoes. I used six eggs, one onion, one can of um, small mushrooms, and then black beans, and then um, like barely a cup of spinach, and then three bell peppers, or no, two, two bell peppers. I already forgot. I have a worse memory. And then garlic and um, onion. So... Yeah, pretty simple recipe. Um, and yeah, so Presley, you can go ahead, go ahead and finish um, the presentation. And yeah. Okay, um, can everybody see my screen? Thumbs up, thank you. Uh, so some helpful resources to help you track your macros, like we were saying earlier, are my fitness pal, food educate, fit now, food labels. And for some recipe ideas, you can use Tasty, Bon Appetit, Yummy, and Kitchen Stories recipes. Um, some extra tips, use all your cooking resources at once. So like Maddie had two burners going, and then you can make large batches of everything. Um, like she was saying, the extra potatoes could be used for other foods if you add like shrimp or chicken or any other kind of meat that you like. And then you could always plan before you buy. Um, and here we're featuring the ketogenic diet. So the keto diet has become very popular in the past few years. The purpose of this diet is um, to treat individuals who have epilepsy and reduce their chances of experiencing seizures. Uh, so the macronutrient profile of a keto diet is 90% fat, 2 to 4% carbohydrates, and then 6 to 8% protein. Uh, with an increased intake of fat, the body will use fat stores instead of carbohydrate stores as the main source of energy. Uh, some pros and cons of the keto diet are the pros, uh, they promote rapid weight loss and is used to treat individuals who are obese. Um, you can also treat patients with epilepsy, and it's beneficial for individuals who are ultra-endurance athletes, like triathletes or marathon runners. The, uh, a couple cons are that you can instantly gain the weight back when you're no longer doing the keto diet. Um, it's not the healthiest because of the high fat intake, and it's not recommended for weightlifters or non-endurance sports because research has shown that keto diets inhibit performance and fatigue is experienced during this training. A good way to find out if the ketogenic diet is for you is to consult the dietitian. So uh, we do have a registered dietitian on campus and the phone number is there. Um, but we'll see if, or you can go ahead and call in to see if the nutrition services are available due to COVID-19. And here's a flyer for our peer nutrition counseling. 
So nutrition counseling will be offered in the fall at the end of September. It will be virtual. And if you are interested in nutrition counseling, a Qualtrics link will be available under the Beach Balance tab at asirecreation.org. And if you have any further questions regarding nutrition counseling, please email uh, cecilia.guerrero at csulb.edu. Uh, here are a couple of FAQs. So will my meal prep taste bad after a couple of days? Uh, the answer is the quality might go down, but the nutrition will still be there. And if you're not going to consume the meal within three to five days, then like Maddie said, uh, try freezing it and then cook it or try freezing it after you cook it. And then another question is, is it microwaving the meal bad for you? Well, research says that there's nothing wrong with microwaving a meal. The nutrition quality is still there. If you're worried about it going dry, maybe add a little bit of water before warming it up and also make sure the container you're microwaving the meal in is safe. So definitely don't put any foil or metal things in your microwave unless you want to, you know, break your microwave. <laughs> And uh, our next event is going to be Posture Correction on September 14th from 6 to 7. And um, we have the meeting ID there. Um, on September 14th from 4 to 5, there's also a guided meditation, and that's on Instagram Live. And then September 16th, we have a guided art from 6 to 7. It's going to be a canvas painting. Uh, September 22nd, we have a DIY wellness hour from 5 to 6. And then September 28th, another guided meditation from four to five, and that's gonna also be on Instagram Live. I just wanted to add in, we also do have a wellness lecture. It's gonna be tomorrow. I'm sorry, we didn't put it on the upcoming events, but it's gonna be tomorrow. Um, and I believe it's at two o'clock or three. Um, Darlene, if you know, you could correct me. Um, check online on Beach Sync um, or on our website to figure out what time it's at and the information to how to get onto the call. Um, it's going to be on um, social uh, relationships. But I think that's all for today. Presley, is there one more slide or is that it? Uh, no, that's the end of the... All right, well, thank you guys for coming. We really appreciate it. And I hope you guys really did enjoy this recipe. And I really hope you try it out. If you do, please take a picture of it, like send it over email or something. We'd love to see it. Um, so yeah, give us your feedback if you do try it um, on like maybe what ways you like to do it. You're welcome, Alessandra. Have a good day. Thank you guys for coming. Have a great one. Thank you for coming.